Leia here from LeiaPersai.com slash MCAT and in this video I'll give you a quick comparison of the 2014 or the old MCAT to the new 2015 exam. If you took the old exam or prepared for the old exam you'll be familiar with that system and may have a difficult time understanding how to change your approach in preparing for the new exam. So it definitely helps to understand what's different about them but also what is similar about them. The MCAT is still the MCAT. It's still the medical college admissions test and that means it's still going to test your understanding of sciences and your ability to apply what you know to passages and discrete questions. But the new exam is definitely different in how it tests the information and it's also going to test you on a lot more information in terms of the length of the exam and the number of sections and topics covered. So let's take a look. The 2014 or the old MCAT had only three sections, while the new MCAT has four sections. The first section on the old exam was the physical science or PS section, which tested you on chemistry and physics through a combination of discrete and passage-based questions. The new MCAT also starts with the chem physics section, but that's the chemical and physical foundations of living systems, but in addition to testing just general chemistry and physics, you'll also see questions in biochemistry and even questions in organic chemistry and biology. The second section on the old exam was the verbal reasoning, which was like an advanced reading comprehension section. The new exam has a similar but slightly more difficult section called the critical analysis and reasoning skills section, or CARS for short. The last and final section on the old exam was the biological sciences and that tested your knowledge of biology and organic chemistry. The new exam also has a bio section called the biological and biochemical foundations of living systems, but it doesn't just test biology and organic chemistry. This section is going to test you on biology, biochemistry, and a little bit of general and organic chemistry. The fourth and new section added to the new MCAT is the Psychological, Social, and Biological Foundations of Behavior, or the Psych and Soch section. This section is going to test you on psychology, sociology, and even a tiny bit of biology. Keeping this in mind, that means that the subjects you have to study for the new exam are going to include the following. While the MCAT itself is course independent, meaning you don't need to take a class to qualify to take the MCAT, it's still highly recommended because when you take these classes in college, you'll really learn the information and be able to use that as your foundation to start studying for the MCAT. You'll need a year of physics, a year of general chemistry, a year of organic chemistry, a year of introductory biology, about one semester of biochemistry and some psychology and sociology. Now keep in mind, your school may not cover exactly what you need for the MCAT, so you'll still have to get MCAT specific study material to make sure that you don't miss any of the topics. The next important distinction between the old and the new exam is the scoring system. For the old exam, every section was scored between 1 and 15 with an average score of about 9 and the total score came from adding up the individual sections with a maximum score of 45. The new exam is scored on a scale of 118 to 132 to make sure that the old and new exam are not compared on a numerical basis. But if you do the math you'll see that 118 to 132 still gives you a 15 point scale. The old exam had an average of 9, the new exam will have an average of 125 per section, and the total score from adding up the four sections will range from 472 to 528, with an average score of about 500. For the old exam, students typically aim for a 30 or higher to be considered competitive, and for the new exam, the scale is not yet available because there isn't yet any data of students being accepted on the new score system. However, if you look at the 30, that requires an average of 10 points per section. So if you apply the same logic to the new exam, a 10 in each section would be a 128, so you probably want to shoot for a 512 or higher to be considered competitive for the average medical school. And the last and most crucial difference between the 2014 and 2015 exam is the amount of time that you spend 
taking the exam and the total time that you spend at the test center. The old exam had sections ranging in time from 60 to 70 minutes, which meant that you had about three hours of testing time and four plus hours of total seat time, which includes all the breaks and the information that you have to read before you start your exam. The new exam, because it has four sections and additional time per section is going to be much, much longer. The actual exam time comes to just over six hours, but the total seat time is going to be about seven and a half hours. This includes the agreement and tutorial before you start your exam and the breaks, including a lunch break in the middle of your exam. Be sure to join me in the next video where I break down the 2015 exam, looking at every section, including time, number of questions, and specific topics that will be tested. Are you stuck on a specific MCAT topic? I offer private online tutoring where I focus on your needs to strengthen your individual weaknesses. Tutoring details can be found using the link below or by visiting my website, layforsci.com slash MCAT tutor. Are you overwhelmed by the sheer volume of information required for the MCAT? Are you worried that lack of a proper study plan and low MCAT score will prevent you from getting into medical school? My new ebook, The MCAT Exam Strategy, a six-week guide to crushing the MCAT, will help you formulate a concrete study plan by helping you figure out where you stand now, identify your goals, and figure out what it takes to reach them. And it's yours free when you sign up for my email newsletter at mcatexamstrategy.com. By signing up for my email newsletter, you'll also be the first to know when I have new videos, MCAT study guides, cheat sheets, tips, and so much more. The link again, mcatexamstrategy.com.